My first girlfriend turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. <sighs> I've been waiting for this one. Netflix has brought us a new animated film which is co-produced by the Chinese studio Pearl Studio. They previously collaborated with DreamWorks and worked on Kung Fu Panda 3 and Abominable. Abominable. Am I saying that right? This time it's an original movie, and an original musical for that matter, and is directed by the legendary Disney animator Glenn Keane. Over the Moon is about a young girl who builds a rocket ship to the moon in hopes to meet the legendary moon goddess Chang'e. Three mentions of the moon in that one sentence, jeez. So yeah, Over the Moon is a musical, has a Chinese setting, has Chinese mythology, and as previously stated, directed by Glenn Keane. I was really, really excited for this movie. The concept art looked really promising, especially that one drawing of Chang'e and Fei Fei. Oh my gosh. It's nice to see a non-Disney movie be a musical. It's been a minute. I feel like I need to ground myself, if that's the right word. I need to talk about something specific first so that this review doesn't get all over the place, so let's talk about the visuals. Oh my gosh, this was a beautiful movie. While I do love seeing ancient China in animated movies like the Kung Fu Panda trilogy, Mulan, and White Snake, it was nice to see modern day China for a change, which did look really cool in the movie. And Lunaria, the city that's on the moon, is... <sighs> wow. Just... wow. It is so vibrant and colorful, and I feel like the only way I'll be able to truly explain it is with my cat lamp. I'll be honest, Lunaria did kind of remind me of my, my color changing cat lamp. Even the buildings and the creatures kind of had this same rubber texture. I don't know, I thought it was kind of interesting that it reminded me of this random object that I had in my room. The movie in general with its settings and just <sighs> everything was so pretty. I can't talk about characters and not talk about Chang'e. She's voiced by freaking Eliza from Hamilton. How iconic is that? Chang'e is so beautiful. She is by far one of the most well-designed animated characters I've seen in years. Hot damn. She has so many beautiful outfits during the movie, but my favorite is definitely the red peacock, I think, robe. I'm not totally sure. This is based off my memory, but either way, I knew she looked gorgeous. And talk about her introductory scene. Wow. In her intro scene, she performs a song for all the citizens of Lunaria. She puts on this just beautiful concert for just one song. It's called Ultra Luminary and it's a total bop. Cause I'm ultra luminary. Again, the colors and the outfits and the vocals. I don't think this is too much of a hot take, but the Ultra Luminary sequence is by far far the best animated scene of the year. I haven't seen Wolf Walkers yet and Soul hasn't come out either, but as of right now, the Ultra Luminary scene is definitely the best animated scene of the year. And even of the decade, I could say that too. If copyright on YouTube wasn't a thing, I might as well just include the entire sequence in this video because I'd, I would totally be willing to. Every frame is just... It definitely reminded me of a Katy Perry concert. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Katie cat. Not biased whatsoever. So aside from the sensational ultra luminary scene, Chang'e has a lot of standout moments in different scenes too. There's this one scene when she's in a ping pong match and she raps during the match. And it's amazing. And there's two scenes when she sings in Mandarin. Again, it's awesome. And talk about that one gif of Chang'e. So much power. So much power. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, in the same ping pong match, during this there's comic book panels and it's just... Uh, it's so cool. <laughs> the scene could very well be inspired by End of the Spider-Verse, and if it is, I'm not complaining. This entire review could just be about Chang'e because she's that iconic and that much of a scene stealer, but there is some more things I want to talk about. For any fans of silent films, there's a trip to the moon reference in this. I mean, I'm not really that surprised by it because, you know, the movie the moon, a trip to the moon, but yeah. Lately for my reviews, I've been writing notes while I'm watching the movie so that I don't forget any little details. And there are definitely some things in here that are a bit out of context. Bungie is adorable. Fei Fei runs up a hill and belts a song a la Belle. 
Palace Security has an amazing design, and Fei Fei rides with literal biker chicks, which is honestly pretty great. And of course, Eru's, which I loved hearing in the score. It does take a while for Fei Fei to build the rocket and go to the moon. I honestly didn't really mind it because I just love the Chinese atmosphere, so I didn't really mind seeing the way Fei Fei and her family lived. Again, the atmosphere and seeing the culture and the traditions and the food. <sighs> this movie gives me yet another reason to visit China and I am dying to go one day. Seriously, visiting Asia is like right up there on my bucket list. And oh my gosh, I forgot to mention the watercolor animation in the beginning. It was beautiful. It's used to briefly tell the story of Chang'e and her love interest I think is pronounced Hongwei. But it's the silk scarf Fei Fei's mom has that has Chang'e and Hongwei on it, which to us tells the story of how they separated and how Chang'e became a moon goddess. Okay, let's start talking about the negatives. Listen, I love Ken Jeong, but Gobi was... Ugh. He is rather annoying. He's not as hilarious as Mushu. Say that to my face, you limp noodle! And not as chuckle-worthy as Olaf. Their parents are dead. But at least not as cringe-worthy as the gargoyles. I'm losing to a bird! Though I will admit, Ken Jeong is a good singer. Gobi does have a saving grace, and if you've seen the movie, you know the scene I'm talking about. Yeah. Also, why did this movie have so many sidekicks and comic reliefs? I counted seven. Feifei had Bungie, a bunny, and I guess Gobi since they are together for a good chunk of the movie. Chin, Feifei's soon-to-be stepbrother who joins them along the trip. He has a frog, and Chang'e has three talking mooncake servants. I think they're called Lunettes. They did have a cool design, but I'm not totally sure why Chang'e has three. She also had this magical green rabbit named Jade. Personally, I would have scrapped the frog and probably two of the Lunettes and tone down Gobi a bit. Why were there so many sidekicks? I get it, Over the Moon is trying to be a Disney movie, but Disney movies don't have that many sidekicks. There were just a couple things here and there that irked me, like Gobi and the ridiculous amount of sidekicks. And the climax was, well, anti-climactic. I mean, it was fine, I was just expecting more. It's definitely more of an emotional climax than an action-packed, heavy climax. I could tell the ending wanted to be a Pixar-level gut punch like Coco, but for me personally it didn't quite get there. And speaking of Coco, you know how The Land of the Dead had that amazing world building? I was expecting it in Over the Moon for Lunaria because it looked really cool, and I wanted to explore more of the city, but we don't really see that much of it, which is kind of disappointing. It doesn't feel as developed or as lived in as the Land of the Dead. Okay, anyway, but overall, Over the Moon was great. Definitely one of the better movies of 2020, let alone animated. I can't wait to see what Netflix, Pearl Studio, and Glenn Keane do next. I'm really looking forward to watching Over the Moon again, perhaps on a bigger screen than my laptop. And I might watch it in Mandarin, which would be really fun. On the rainbow scale, this is a cyan movie. As for my ranking for major animated Netflix movies, you know, ones that made a decent amount of buzz in the animation and film community, my ranking would go Klaus because duh, Over the Moon and I Lost My Body Are Tied, and then The Willoughby's is at the bottom. To be honest, I think Disney's rival this decade is going to be Netflix, especially because they recently announced that they're planning to release six animated movies a year. Maybe I prefer quality over quantity, but for all I know, this could be successful for Netflix. So far, they have multiple animated movies in multiple styles for multiple age groups, so this should be interesting. So if you have seen Over the Moon, what did you think? What's your favorite song? Is it Ultra Luminary like mine? But make sure you comment, like, subscribe for future movie reviews and movie commentaries, and I'll see you later.